Hello everyone, this is your 5 and welcome to the Google Man Central Tutorial Review. And today so I'll be looking at the 1985 release by Hasbro of the G.I. Joe Vehicle and Action Figure Review. And today's Vehicle and Action Figure Review looking at the Cobra Moray Hydrofall and its pilot, the Cobra Rat Lamb 3. Now I got them this entire whole set with the Moray Hydrofall, the Lamb 3 and the Final Card. Although the boat itself is not exactly 100% complete, it is missing one item, one part, that would be the lens for the spotlight. Now, we have the box and the instruction manual. Everything here is complete, mostly complete at, le at least, for a total sum of $50 because I also have to order the Moray Hydrofalls sticker labels to replace the old ones. And it is one of my holy grail item that I really wanted to get. One of my favorite and most awesome, awesome favorite vehicle and I managed to get it for $50 which is it's quite difficult to get the Moray Hydro for in such a good shape because when I first purchased this, this was totally covered in dust and I have to bleach clean everything on this vehicle. Plus the fact that not only is covered in dust, even the sticker labels is also worn out or starts to peel off, etc. So it's quite difficult to get the Moray Hydro for in a good decent price because most people are actually selling it at least 80 to 90, maybe $100 depending whether the boat is in good shape, whether it is missing any parts at all. Sometimes it will go up to 100 to two, three hundred dollars depending on how well well kept the boat is and sometimes they will include the box as well so fifty dollars for this entire thing is really worth it so without further ado let's start our review with the lamp free first be right back and we're back and this time we'll take a look at the lamp free but first things first let's take a look at the file card that came along with it now you can actually find the file card at the back portion of the packaging box for the Cobra Moray Hydro 4 and which you have to really cut out the file card as indicated at the edges of the file card itself there's the cutout line. Now closer inspection at the top section there are stated Cobra Hydro 4 pilot code name Lamfreeze. Here you got a nicer image of the Lamfree piloting the Cobra Moray Hydro 4. Here stated file name unknown primary military specialty Hydro 4 pilot Secondary military specialty, Cobra Fortman, bracket EOS and bracket, birthplace various countries, grade 0 03 or equivalent. Now in the write-up is a bit interesting. This is a I would say the pre-Cobra Viper era. During that time 1985 Cobra Viper figures haven't arrived yet. So this file card is actually beforehand. Now it stated Lamb Freeze are the elite of the Cobra C arm. To qualify for Lamb Free training, a candidate must be a Cobra Trooper instead of Cobra Viper because Cobra, Cobra Viper figures haven't even well, started to release yet. And only after when the Cobra Vipers started to release, Cobra Vipers are the starting point to advance further specialization instead of a Cobra Trooper. So this is a pre-era of the Cobra Viper era. Now, Candidate must be a Cobra Trooper in top physical condition who has completed his EU training bracket at EU's other frogmen underwater demolition specialist of the Cobra Legion and bracket and has been operational as an EU for more than a year. The training is highly selective and more than 50% of the applicants wash up before completing the course. Very interesting. And even more interesting is that because this is a pre-era of the Cobra Viper, so well, the file card here stated that it has to be a Cobra Trooper. But then again, after the Cobra Viper started to appear, I would assume that, well, you have to be a Cobra Viper, then go for eel training, then you can become a, well, a lamb free. Now, the back portion of the card itself is part of the box itself, the cardboard box, nothing special. Now, let's take a look at the figure's accessory. The figure only comes with one accessory, which is a submachine gun here. Now the entire submachine gun is not painted at all of course it's made of a silver plastic material color and the entire mode of it is totally unique for 
the Land Free itself during that time that was first released. Now let's take a close look at the mold here. Here we have a nice little strap for you to hang it onto the shoulder for the lamp free itself. You got a front handle here and a back handle with a tiny little trigger. They even bothered to actually make a mold for that. Very nice. And if that's not bad enough, there's also gun setting as well. There's a very tiny gun setting there, you know, to fire burst rounds or single shots. Very nice. Here we have the magazine clip attached to the side and we have the barrel on the front here very nicely done of course the mold here on the other side is also quite interesting because there's also a gun setting on the other side as well very very funny but very nice the figure can actually hold it quite well let's take a look at the figure's paint job now bear in mind this is a 1987 figure so majority of parts are not painted at all but then again even current figures are the same now majority of the body itself is made of a i would say a little bit grayish silver plastic material color except for the head which is made totally of a black plastic material color so let's take a look at the head first the top section here is not painted but the visor here and the back portion is painted in a i would say a little bit darker blue more like sea blue paint job onto the visor and the back portion the mouth section here is painted in silver all over and there's a little bit of black slits there on the front and on the side neck joint of course is not painted of them. and the torso here is also as I mentioned before made of a grey silver plastic material color but the vest here is painted in blue in a lighter blue not the same blue as the visor itself this one is a bit more lighter the waist itself as you can see the belt is also painted but the belt buckle is painted in a i would say a really dull colored gold paint job very nice but the belt is painted the same color for the visor itself upper bicep has no paint job at all just a little bit paint job there's a bit of a, I would say, an insignia logo onto the upper bicep here, but it's very small and it's really hard to see. For the gloves itself, it's painted in the same blue as the visor. Tie section on one side is not painted, but on the other side, there's the gun holster here, it's also painted, same blue as the visor. Lower section of the legs itself, here we got a little bit, little bit of a strap with a knife sheath and the handle. For the knife itself is painted in the same color as the belt buckle which is painted in a i would say very light colored gold paint job this boots here is all painted in black now let's take a look at the figures mold now during the time that was released in 1985 this figure was totally unique mold none of the body parts that were used for this figure is reused at all everything here is all unique mold for the lamprey which in a few years time later after 1985 they started to reuse his mold especially for the Python patrol series very nicely done you got the head itself which is also quite nice simplistic but still nice got the vest here with a zipper in the middle very nice back portion nothing special one side of the arm here you got a small little pouch on the other side also another pouch but got a nice little logo on one side here got a zipper on the bottom section of the forearm here very nice belt buckle here pouches two straps for the belt because the second strap is to hold the gun holster very nice bottom section of the leg itself the right leg actually has a knife sheath not bad of the mold itself it's actually quite nice simplistic but very nicely done now let's take a look at the figure's articulation now bear in mind this is a 1985 figure so articulation is limited but the head can actually sort of left and right and up and straight torso is made of a o-ring rubber band which attach onto the torso space to hook onto the well the waist hook itself so you cannot turn this 360 degrees but you can turn left and right and back a little bit and forward or side to side 
if you turn 360 degrees on this figure's torso, it will just break. Shoulders here can turn 360 degrees and lift the arms this high. Elbow joint here can bend this far and turn 360 degrees. No wrist joint, of course. Then hip joints here can move forward, straight to the side a little bit. And then we have a knee joint that bends this far. Now, let's fully equip the Lamfrey with his accessory. Very nice. Now the Lamfrey itself is not the most detailed figure for the for a GIU figure in during that time in that was released in 1985, but quite one of the most memorable one because he is the pilot for the Cobra Moray Hydro 4 and to those who actually grew up during that time and first saw the Cobra Moray Hydro 4 is is a monster of a boat and which makes this figure one of the more I would say memorable ones because. The Lamfrey here actually been made into a 25th anniversary figure, which is really surprising to that. Really nice. And I actually like the figure for the vintage 1985 Lamfrey. It's actually very nicely done. Simplistic, but well detailed on some parts. Not too detailed compared to the other figures, but it will work. So if I'm gonna give a rating on this, I say I give it a nice, a nice 7 out of 10. Yes, 7 out of 10 for the Lamfrey. Next up, we'll take a look at the Cobra Moray Hydro Fall. Be right back. And we're back, and this time we'll take a look at the Cobra Moray Hydro Fall. This vehicle is a beast, a total beast. And it's simply really huge. As already shown in the beginning of the video, comparison with the size of the Lamfrey figure with the Cobra Moray Hydro Fall. I'll do another size comparison again. Let's can see the sheer size of this monster here. It's quite impressive indeed. First things first, let's take a look at the, well, the boats colors being applied onto it. Bear in mind, this is a 1985 vehicle. There is absolutely no paint job involved for this entire vehicle. Everything you see here is just pure plastic material color laden with a lot of stickers. Now, the bottom section of the boat itself, including the hydrofoil, is made of a, I would say, gray plastic material color. However, the top section of the boat is made of a darker red plastic material color. Even the deck itself, this portion of the deck. Then the rest of the parts, as you can see here, is made of a gray plastic metal color, but two of the larger torpedoes mounted at the side of the fin of the hydrofoil here, the Mori hydrofoil here, is made of a dark gray plastic metal color, as you can see on this section here. And we also notice the brightly yellow colored missiles made of a yellow plastic metal color strapped on the side of the Moray Hydrofall. The back portion of the engine itself, as you can see, is also made of a dark gray plastic metal color and the engine itself is also made the same plastic metal color except for the tubings here, it's made of a black plastic metal color. So basically the colors are quite simple. The top deck of the boat itself is made of a dark red and everything else is made of grey and some of the parts are made of a dark grey and that's about it. Oh, and of course the two side missiles are made of yellow glass and metal colour and that's about it. And also the four missiles found in the hidden well, deck there also made of a yellow glass and metal colour. Now the colours is alright, I really like the colours because it blends in quite well because it looks like Cobra, a part of the Cobra organization. But what makes it really great is the amount of stickers, this ridiculous amount of stickers that you have to apply onto the boat itself. I know because I replaced the new, the old stickers with the new shade of stickers purchased from CobraStickers.com. And the most memorable stickers, the more, I would say, notable stickers would be the Moray Hydrofoil sticker on the side of the boat itself, both sides of the boat of course. Very impressive, I really love this sticker. 
rather huge looking sticker there's also a amount of detail stickers being placed onto the well, boat itself as you can see there are a lot of well, a lot of warning labels a lot of details very nicely done got a nice little Cobra logo on the top here as well very nice even the torpedo as you can see there there's a nice little snake logo there very nice even at the back portion of the vehicle there's also some sticker labels as well very nicely done and if that's not enough there's also some sticker labels inside the uh, the control panels as well very nice now let's take a look at the vehicle small now during the time that was released in 1985 everything you see here is totally unique mode there were at least a few years ahead of its time after every few years of course they actually reissued the Cobra Moray Hydrofall one for the Joe site the Night Force version and then there's also well the convention exclusive version which is in well orange and there's also another version that is in dark blue and finally there's also a green version for the Joe site as well yes so we actually have red black blue dark blue orange which kind of looks silly and green five types of five types of colors for the cobra more hydro for which is well, i'm still surprised they didn't actually reissue this vehicle again for the 25th or 30th anniversary figures because the vehicle is absolutely gorgeous and they actually released this in a convention as well that was i would say 2003 2005 around that time it's quite surprising that they don't actually reissue this boat again since they have the ability to well to release it in a convention exclusive twice now let's take a close look at the details there now everything on the bottom of the boat itself is nothing that special every detail is being laid on top of the boat itself as you can see there so there's a lot of tiny little details there really impressive especially on this section here there's a lot of nice rivets panelings more rivets more pistons filters got a nice little spotlight here we have the lens of course and the spotlight actually has two handles for the figure to hold onto but the handles is rather small and well short got a lot of guns for this vehicle however the top deck of the gun itself the turret gun itself is a bit loose but it's still all right got two larger guns on each side of the vehicle itself as you can see here nicely done with the details it actually attach onto the boat on one side and onto the fin itself got a larger caliber I would say cannon perhaps very nice in the middle portion there's also another set of gun there the turret there's a double barrel gun as well with two handles for the figure to hold on to here there's also the torpedo at the bottom section of the boat itself the missile strap on top of the section here lots of nice details found inside the cockpit for the Moray Hydro 4 there are two seats there not counting the turret on the top there are two seats there and you can see there's a amount of details found inside the boat very nice and on the other side of the boat that's where the pilot sits because there's a steering wheel there which you can actually turn 360 degrees very nice then we have the turret on the top there where you can place the figure there's a peg there to plug in to make sure the figure stays on so yes the turret can turn 360 degrees as well and the gun can pivot down and all the way up but it's a bit loose here very nice yes the missile is removable it's part of the accessories itself so does the torpedoes as well
Now, what's interesting about this is that these two covers can actually lift open and you can store one figure in here and another figure on the other side. So basically, there's a lot of figures you can place onto the Cobra Moe Hydrofall. Two for the controls inside, one for the turret, two more hidden inside here, most probably controlling these large guns, and four more figures at the back here, but later we'll go to that. Here we have a large little, well, I would say a button when you push it, as shown before, reveals the well, the hidden deck with the hidden missiles underneath the deck itself. And yes, the missiles are removable. Very nice. There's a bit of articulation there, which is very awesome. Now, at the back portion of the vehicle itself, there's also a lot of nice details as well. Got four machine guns, mounted machine guns for the figures to stand and armored. You can actually store more figures is when it comes to the vintage figures. Because there's actually three pegs at this section here. Each side of the section actually has three pegs so you can actually place more figures there. Very nice. So yes we have the machine gun here get to turn 360 degrees. Very nice. Got the engine here. The cover can be removed to reveal more details of the engine. Very nicely done. Now, the back portion here, this is where it stores the depth charges. There are two depth charges per section. Very nice. And yes, it, the moment you pull it out, it will just drop off quite easily. So you have to be extra careful of not losing those parts. Now, it's called a hydrofoil for a reason because at the bottom section of the boat itself, this is the hydrofoil part, as you can see there. And at the back portion here, there's a tab which you have to pull, well, push it, sorry. You push it, and that's where the hydrofoil gimmick pops out and yes the vehicle the boat itself can still stand properly with the hydrofoil popped out and if you want it to be well in a normal mode you can just pull the tab and it slides back in very nice the vehicle is absolutely gorgeous there's a lot of amount of details into this very nicely done Now, let's put the vintage lamprey figure onto the seating where the pilot seating is located. Let's fold the legs. Fold the legs a little bit. Very nice. You can actually put a lot of figures for this boat itself. It's rather impressive. Two for this hidden compartment here. Two more inside here. There's a total of four. One more for the turret itself. There's a total of five. And if you really want to cram at the back portion of the vehicle here, you can add in six more figures. There's a total of 11 figures you can put in. 11 figures. Vintage figures, of course. Onto the Moraine Hydrofoil, which is rather scary. There's a lot of figures to put, put in. Really nice. But you must be wondering does it fit in the newer figures? Well, stay tuned and we'll find out. Be right back. And we're back. And this time the Cobra Moraine Hydrofoil is fully outfitted with the 25th anniversary figures and the Rise of Cobra figures. As you can see here, we have the 25th anniversary lamp freeze. One situated on top of the turret, the other one is piloting the vehicle. We have the Rise of Cobra Aqua Viper, which I actually treat it as a lamp free as well because it looks the same. And inside the 
hidden compartment here we got another lavatory but I removed the oxygen pack at the back here because with the oxygen pack it can't fit in so I have to remove it but basically even a Cobra Viper or a Cobra Trooper can actually fit in quite nice so that's on the other side as well now on the back portion of the vehicle I outfitted the back portion with all four eels from the Rise of Cobra series all the black eels are at the back here all armed with the mounted machine guns very nice although you cannot actually put in two more figures as I mentioned before because you can actually put more figures using the vintage figures but for the newer figures as you can see you can only place up until nine figures as you can see there two four six eight nine very nice and the question remains in your mind right now is whether or not the Cobra Murray Hydro 4 can it float or not so stay tuned we'll be right back and we're back and this time we're in my bathroom and the bathtub has been, has been filled with water and next to me is the Cobra Murray Hydro 4 outfitted with the 25th anniversary figures and also the Rise of Cobra figures now let's begin the test can see the Cobra Moray hydrophone is floating nicely and it's not even sinking at all this is the most awesome vehicle ever as you can see here very nice so let's head back to the table there and give it the final rating be right back and we're back overall my final thoughts for the Cobra Moray Hydro 4 is that this vehicle is absolutely gorgeous. First off, the sheer size of it is extremely huge. Second, there's a ton of details for the Cobra Moray Hydro 4. A lot of nice little details there. I really like the gimmick. Despite that, it's not the gimmick that attract kids. But some of the stuff is actually quite nice, especially on the on the button there when you push it down and it releases the hidden deck with the missiles underneath let's not forget the hydro fall function at the bottom section really nice plus the fact not only does the details but it's also laden with a lot of insane amount of sticker decals as you can see that I really love the design of the sticker decals they are really nice and then it's also able to store in a lot of vintage figures a lot now it's also compatible to store in your 25th anniversary figures up until the 30th anniversary figures as well very nice really great great stuff there's a lot of playability for the Cobra Moray Hydro 4 here but the problem is that now to those who actually wants to own a Cobra Moray Hydro 4 chances are to try to obtain this boat is well in a reasonable price is rather difficult most people are selling it minimum at least 80 90 dollars there and that's bound to have at least one or two items that's missing or broken parts and speaking of the broken parts the most problematic for the cobra mori hydro 4 is that some of the parts are rather sensitive and rather easily breaking apart and some of the parts gets lost quite easily as well for instance like the spotlight lens as well even at the spotlight lens some people are actually selling it for $30 minimum and other parts that are easily broken like the windshield itself or the pegs especially on the pegs and tabs they tend to break really easy or for this section for the gun itself they tend to break easy as well or the machine gun mounted machine gun at the mag there these are the parts that tend to have a lot of problems some people are actually well selling it with well broken machine guns or even selling it with hard machine guns then you have to worry about the depth charges at the back as well whether or not if the people uh, the seller actually sells one that is complete with the depth charges another problem that you have to worry about is whether or not the 
button here and the hydrofold actually works or not so there is a lot of things that you have to be worrying about if you want to own a hydrofall and to those who actually have a hydrofall since 1985 that well there will be two types of people one that actually kept it really well and there will be no problems at all or the others will actually chuck it in the storm in a box and forgot about it for so many years there's bound to have broken parts that's also another problem that especially when you want to find well replacement parts for the Moray Hydro Fall which is it's still able to be found for the replacement parts except for the spotlight lens that's one of the major problems and trying to get a Cobra Moray Hydro Fall in an affordable price is quite difficult rather difficult although the boat itself is absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous indeed and compatible with your current figures if I'm gonna give a rating on this, I'll say I'll give it a nice, a nice 10 out of 10. Yes, a 10 out of 10 for the Cobra Moray Hydro 4. As you can see, despite that this vehicle is mostly 99% complete, there are some broken tabs there, but it's already been glued. And there are some missing parts like the lens itself, but even at 99% complete, this boat is still looking great and among my favorites so i thank you all for watching this is new 5 and i'm signing off